All right, everyone, hello, we are back, and it is so nice to see you here, hopefully watching on Behance or on our YouTube channel. Thank you again for joining us here on Adobe Live. My name is Jason Levine, today joined by the one, the only, Evan Abrams. Evan, thank, thank you. you for joining us. <laughs> hey, thanks for having me. It's good yeah, to be here. Yeah, really great. I mean, I'm an Evan Abrams. Yes. I'm, I'm this specific one. The, really. <laughs> right. Come on, man. Well, Own it. Right. I, get, I get mail from a different Evan Abrams. <laughs> he lives a different lifestyle than me. Cur Curiously, there's another uh, Jason Levine who apparently is very, very famous in the gaming world, and we look absolutely nothing. He's like the polar opposite oh. of me, too. So it's I, I often get a lot of that like on Twitter, too. <laughs> it's kind of strange. In any case, thank you again for joining us here. And what we're doing today, if you've been watching any of the previous streams, of course, is that this is really about the life of being in a creative agency. And the theme of the day is travel to utopia. Now, if you are watching on Behance.net, if you go into the contest tab there, uh, you will actually see that you have all sorts of information about this. And what we want you to do as interactive viewers of the stream today is to actually create and share a short animation uh, created in After Effects CC, because that's really what we're going to focus on working that's in today. Right. You're going to yeah. show us some tips and tricks and really kind of cool, yeah, we're cool gonna be, techniques. We're going to be uh, we're going to be looking at uh, something that looks very complex and we'll show you how simple it actually is. Mm -hmm. So it's <laughs> we're going to pull back the curtain. Nice. <laughs> So, uh, as always, because we have our live interactive chat, please let us know where you're coming from. Who's here? I see we've got Simon, we've got Ronnie, Kasama, Mitch, Senek, Jose, Tim, Madu. Very nice to see you. Dana Pride, what is up? Dana was just saying yesterday that she was going to join us. Yep. Very nice to have that follow up there. True to her word, here she yes, is. Yes, that's right. Yuli, okay. Pat from LA, we've got some representing Paul in, in Gothenburg. Mm -hmm. Anos, Laura, Voodoo Val, what is happening, Voodoo Val? So nice to see you again. Cesar, <laughs> Natasha. All right. Beauty. So, again, theme of the day travel to Utopia. And you see uh, b.net slash live. You can find out all the information now that we've also got. Uh, a link in there so you create your animation and you can share your animation at any time during the stream and uh, I'll see it pop in here once you share it and then we'll actually be able to show it live right here online and let let everybody chime in on their thoughts mm -hmm. and no it, pressure yeah animation is difficult to put together very quickly but think of it as a true test of right. your powers so it absolutely and it to touch on that agency theme you're often asked to perform to tight deadlines with within very tight constraints and uh, sometimes alone sometimes part of a team but uh, this is one such scenario so, that's right you know clients come in in a couple hours that's right what do you got <laughs> what do you got show me <laughs> wow me <laughs> that's right they still say that is that kind of like 1992 people say a lot of things people say so. a lot of things i know <laughs> it's really nothing that hasn't been said variations on wow me so now um and i know up on your screen now you've got sort of a, a, a finished version here of some, some yeah. sort of idea things that you've been working on um yeah but i thought maybe you could kind of detail before you begin sort of yeah that process of okay you've got the brief it begins mm -hmm. with the brief the creative yeah. brief most projects most organized projects right. will begin with a brief of some kind right. so in our case in the future, there is a planet. It is called Utopia. The planet of Utopia would like us to help encourage visitors. Yes. So could you please do something with that? And sometimes a brief is just that nebulous, right? right. And it's sort of an agency's responsibility to massage that, to work with the client, to generate things that are actionable. Right. And so for us, we have come up with this final action here. A, uh, a visual assault of many scenes, the sort of thing that is kind of common uh, as an output. So we've got a lot of things. You got a little gateway up here. We've got hanging out on the beach down oh, here. Yeah. Fantastic. We've got a, a, a robot butler, a robutler, if you will. A robutler. <laughs> so trying to trying to convey as much about Utopia as we can in one frame. Right. All loopable too. All these yeah. animations loopable. All, yeah. A lot of it loops. Mm -hmm. So in this way, we have a high utility of things that can be used. Right. So all these elements, we could use them in this way, in your 16 by nine frame. Right. Something that could say, it could kick off a marketing pitch to say, well, now here's the rest of the video about Utopia. Right. Or it could be the sort of thing that ends things. It could be part of a motion graphic piece as like a like a thesis. Mm -hmm. So like, these are the areas we're going to talk about. Now we're talking about them. Right. Um, but it is a good way. The eye is kind of scattered all over the place. Um, now, in an agency setting, this would probably be an iteration. 
and we would see many iterations of this right. and hopefully more process leading up to it so right. that we don't end up committing too many hours to something that's completely yeah. off the mark. <laughs> that's right. right. Now, actually, I wanted to touch upon that because when you talked about the brief being, and sometimes briefs being just nebulous, I think part of the the the, the challenge, but the excitement around that is that they've chosen you mm -hmm. yeah. to create the focus there. That's right. right. Yeah. If if you are reading a brief, you can rest assured that you're the right person to be receiving it, right. and you should have the confidence to know. Well, this has come to my desk. It's meant for me. Right. right? You wouldn't be reading it if you didn't have the skills right. to accomplish it. Right. Um, and in an agency format, so I've I've worked with agencies, I've not been employed by them. I'm usually brought in as a freelancer right. under fairly tight NDA, so we will not be getting into too many specifics. Right. <laughs> right. Some, some people have some nice awards on their desk uh, with that's not right. my name on them. That's so right. That's For work that you ultimately created. That's, that's right. That's well. Right. We created it together. That's right. Uh, together. You're such, a, you're such a team player. <laughs> well, so that's important, right? Like, in an agency. See what I did there? That's yeah, right. Yes. Setting mm -hmm. me up. Setting you up, yes. So, if we're going to talk about agencies, we need to talk about how it's a collaborative environment, how no agency is a single person. Um, and so, in, in if we're talking about the life cycle or the, the life of an agency, they grow, they shrink, but they are made of humans humans who have to work together to a common goal right. and usually in line with either an ethos or established production parameters that define the agency. The agency is a continuous set of ideas that move forward even if the players who execute those ideas change. Right. So when we're talking about an agency versus a collective, an agency versus um, versus a production company, you know, the agency is defined by ethos, by values, by the process right. that they do. Okay. Um, and if you're going to be part of that, you need to work within an existing framework. Right. Um, so yeah, um, let's get into uh, making some stuff though, okay. without further ado. And I gotta just say, you got a lot of wows, the great Evan from Usama there. You know? <laughs> yeah, uh, and this is great. And I think one of the things too that I, I was saying before we actually went on was, <clears throat> I definitely want you to keep emphasizing all these the, the, the anecdotal sound bites of the process of being in right. the agency, because I think that, that sometimes gets lost. And whereas you were just talking about before, like you have the, the, the luxury today mm -hmm. of really working alone. That's right, yeah. Right? You know. and it Luxury and stress. <laughs> That's you know, right. You got, you know. On the one hand, you carry it all yourself if That's you're working right. alone, if That's you're a right. freelancer brought in, but uh, that can be sometimes very freeing. I know, I mean, I've, I've talked to many people in this business they are not all uh, great with people, right? right? A lot of our interaction throughout the day is a person, a screen, a brief. And, you know, that doesn't work the human muscles of interaction and collaboration. Right. So sometimes those can be the sticking points. And mm -hmm. if you want to, if you want to sort of go far in an agency, or a production company, or a collective, or right. whatever it calls itself, right. you need to have the soft skills to work with people right. to be a member of the team, that's right. And then eventually lead the team, and then eventually be the person writing the brief, communicating to teams who you need to be able to communicate with effectively and sympathetically. So right. we, we don't often talk about emotional intelligence. <laughs> right. We usually talk about technical ability that's right. and that kind of thing. But that that is a that's a driving force behind ultimately what what the output becomes and what, in, the, what the vibe is once well, you deliver it. In right? many ways, right? So our brief here is about utopia or utopia, whichever way you pronounce it. Right. Um, but it's about, the brief is about communicating the idea of a place that is great that you want to go to. Right. You're communicating with an audience, like your pieces will communicate with an audience. You want them to have an emotive response, an emotional response to your piece. And in order to do that, you need understanding of emotion. You need to know what design elements will create emotions and how you can manipulate them That's right. or affect them, but you know, also need to be sensitive to the emotional states and everything of the people on your team and the people around right. you, especially if you're working with clients who come in who have expectations and now you're going to deliver on those expectations. Right. And people have a lot of investment in pieces. A planet that's shelling out cash money to bring people to it, that is, that is an investment monetarily. It's a by, fantastic planet. Actually. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Who's they, signing up? <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just throw money. That's right. <laughs> but along with that, they're also investing a lot of ideas, they're investing a lot of expectation, and they're investing a lot of themselves. Yeah. No one comes into a project 
wanting it to be bad or wanting it to fail. Right, Everyone wants the best version of that thing. Yep. Um, yeah, and Laura makes the point too, communication can easily be misunderstood when it's all done by emails and the client often <laughs> thinks that you're magicians. And, right. You know. Well, in a way yeah. we are magicians. That's right. But we need to be more like Penn and Teller magicians. Penn, right. <laughs> and less like David Blaine magicians. That's right, yes. So That's right, that's right. You want to... You want to explain the craft a bit. You want to get them on board with the same things that you're doing. Um, and I think really importantly uh, is to sort of let people know there's a lot of labor involved in this stuff. And that's right. together, I will be performing the labor you want to have happen. That's right. Um, and as you said, oftentimes, because someone was just asking, do you often share a finished product first or rough ideas or go from there? It's you a, would normally see a lot of iterations oh, here. Yeah. We're only seeing kind of V1 that's now. Right. Yeah, so, um, so what we're seeing here in this in the piece uh, on the screen is is basically um, something that has not been checked by a client, right. right? This is uh, a designer who's had free reign and no editing. Right. Um, but really, as we go through this process, we'll be take, we'll taking a pause and saying, this is where we pause. Right. This is the gate we go through. Okay. Um, and so sometimes we talk about workflow. Everyone likes to talk about workflow. Sure. Flow. But usually people talk about workflow in the context of how do I get from Illustrator into After Effects? Right. That's a kind of workflow. Yes, absolutely. Right. Um, but the other type of workflow is the entire lifespan of a project that goes beyond the technical, that goes into at what point do we stop drawing and start animating? At what point do right. we stop taking meetings and start you know, ingesting high amounts of coffee and staring at a screen. So the, <laughs> Always, right? That's the answer yeah. to that one. Yeah. Used to be. <laughs> as, a, as a former uh, recovering 12 espresso a day <laughs> consumer, I know, I know uh, exactly what you're utopia, talking about. Yes. The, the air is full of coffee. Right, right, right. <laughs> but let's uh, let's get in here and make okay, some stuff. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. All right. So what we've got here is what appears to be fairly complex. Yeah. Um, and today, I think what we'll go through is sort of the framework so that you can sort of put your own things into these boxes. Um, but today, we're going to make sort of this box structure of things. So we'll be, we'll be dealing with populating the thing with a bunch of little frames. Okay, yeah. We'll be, we'll be dealing with how to set that up, how to plan for it, um, how to make those things uh, happen, how to not only plan for it technically, but to plan for it in in the sense of uh, in, in the sense of how you get someone to sign off and agree to these things, and how you would communicate things in their base form before you go on to communicate them in their final form. Right. Um, if we can if we can go back to ancient philosophy again, there is a, since this is based on. Utopia, the concept by Thomas right. Moore. That's right. <laughs> we, um, we'll go even further back to this idea that there is a, a perfect thing and there is um, sort of the echo of that thing that we see in our reality. That's a Plato thing, I think. I don't know. Correct me in the chat if I'm wrong. But um, what we're doing is creating early forms, not fully formed, not That's the right. perfect thing. That's right. Because you, we will approach the perfect thing mm -hmm. as we approach the planet Utopia. That's right. Um, so, where this process starts is at the end, oddly. Okay. So, the final frame, sort of the final resting state, right. is what we want to establish first, right. and then we figure out how we get into that Do state. Do all the rest. Right? So, if we were to reveal, sort of, let's strip back a layer, yeah. let's take some of the, take some of the, the good looking stuff off, or in this case, just cover it up, this is the first state, right? Mm -hmm. I'm blocking it out with big shapes, big colors, the specific color palette, which you can enjoy in That's the right. contest tab, and the, the full yep, brief. The, the link is in there. They can actually get the color palette on the font that we're using here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so having this to know generally what colors and values we're going to be dealing with um, before we start filling this in with specifics. Right. And this can help us define our motion, because if we just play this back, we can still look at this and say, I'm happy with that. Mm -hmm. right? I am pleased with what I'm looking at. And a project at this state, we haven't invested a lot of time into making a lot of these little things. Right. Now, from just the actually just After Effects side, are these just sh animated shape layers that yeah. you're dealing with here? Okay. They're shape layers, and what we're doing is we're altering their position, generally. Yeah. And in many cases, we're not even altering their size. Right. But this 
is a concept that we see done many ways with many results. Right. So in this case, we are choosing, we're choosing sort of everything comes in from the side, coming right. in from the side, mm -hmm. coming in from the side, side, side. Right. So it's all encroaching, encroaching in on the frame. Other choices that we've made, we've made a conscious choice to make none of the boxes the same size. Right. <laughs> Very um, good. Okay. This is a choice because we go back to the brief, it's utopia, and in my mind, a utopia should be where everyone is unique and different. If we went ahead and made this all uniform boxes, mm -hmm. that is a different feeling, right? It feels different to see a universe, like a, a uniform grid of things, structure, order. Some utopias are like that. Right. We're looking at your Logan's Runs. That's right. We're right. looking at your... Uh, Ooh, getting some old school references. <laughs> THX 1138. Right, oh, right. <laughs> Put your favorite dystopia in Very the chat. Very nice, yeah, but that's right. These are uniform dystopias, right? and they are utopic until the scales fall from your eyes. Of heart. course, which they inevitably do. Always, Always yeah. yeah. But we should, to avoid such negative feelings, perhaps start in a more positive place. Right, okay. Um, I've also sort of roughly divided this thing up, roughly into uh, into a grid. Um, we will go. I was, was going to just say, so that's a custom grid that you've done here, right? So what I could do is I can go into After Effects Preferences. We get a look at the grids and guides. Yes. Now you can set Ooh, this up. Preferences. Yeah. Oh, now we're right. getting into the preferences. <laughs> Nerd alert. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I prefer to work with. Uh, Six vertical, six horizontal okay. divisions. Yeah. Usually. Usually, okay. Now I do this because of the rule of thirds, mm -hmm. um, okay. which yeah. is a thing from photography, cinematography. Absolutely. Yep. The, the principles that guide us in motion design are the principles that guide us in all design. In all design, We're right. About that's, a, that's a great point to make. Line too. and form and shape and uh, composition and mm -hmm. color. It's all the same. Right. There's not a lot of special things. The right. difference in motion design is you have to try to apply them on every frame if you can. Right. So 24 times a second. That's right. <laughs> which that's right. we're kind of trying to do here. So you'll notice that even during parts of the animation, this guy's coming up and bouncing off of right. the half, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, it they seem to be interacting and coalescing in, in these different ways, but keeping them in this nice orderly grid, we could have we could have chosen to right. use rotation. We could have right. chosen to have like a 3D thing. I was going to say on. 3D or sort of bounce and slide and all these we other could things. Could do so many things. Mm -hmm. um, if we can channel our inner Bob Ross here, you know, it's it's your project. You can do whatever you want. You think a happy little happy cloud. little painted <laughs> cloud blocks yeah. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You think you think a little gray rectangle lives there. You That's just right. put it right in there. It's, right. it's the world is your oyster. But right. we don't really want to start in After Effects. Because if we were to be drawing your shape layers and then we have to send that to the client, well then we'd have to export the frame, make a new composition, blah, 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 export right. the frame. Right. If only there was a program where we could make things fairly quickly. Fairly quickly. Yeah. And Laura, perhaps this will answer. Laura's been, I guess, having some problems importing uh, Illustrator files. I kind of missed the beginning there, but hopefully, Laura, we're going to address this now since yeah. we're working in Illustrator. And also, you've got a very big fan in Hamza, Aziz. <laughs> good. Well, so, good to yes. see you, man. Yeah. <laughs> so we would want to work. We would like to start working with something that's approximately our frame size. So for example, if you're making, if you're following along at home and you're making mm -hmm. your own thing, maybe you want to make a square thing. Maybe you want to make a make something that is long and thin. Maybe you want to make something formatted for iPhone screens. Right. You want to start at the end, consider the output that's before right. the input. Yeah, that's right. So we would like to make a 1920 by 1080 regular size thing. So let's start there. And then we'll end up with this lovely thing here. Mm. Oh no, how do I make it go away? There we go. So we're not gonna be doing anything super complex in in here, we're basically just going to draw some rectangles. So we will need to just draw those rectangles. And what we're doing here is we're establishing what will eventually become the other the other thing. Okay. So in here, we might say, well, roughly, roughly, let's take up half of this thing. We could say that maybe we should we should have a piece that's this big. But all the time, we need to be considering. How do we get there? How might we arrive at these at these end states? Right. Um, and we'll just go view, and we will turn off 
we will hide the transparency grid just so it's a little easier to see our frame. And what I'd also like to do is to have those colors around that we can work with. Right. So. So do you keep a, a, a palette of swatch handy? Just yeah. Just so you can dip in and out of it, yeah. Usually that's that's what you like to do. But I sometimes like to just make little boxes. Oh, okay. I was going to ask if you use like CC libraries for that, but that's, this is legit. I mean, if in the artboard world, this is what you're typically doing, right? Exactly. You can keep it handy, yeah. And I think it, I think I do that out of habit for, right. Um, just where things can be organized. Right. So if we were to have the libraries going on, right. we would be just grabbing things That's right. yeah. from over here. Mm -hmm. Is Utopia up in here? Mm -hmm. Thing made one for you. To be honest, I don't know who is who's last logged in. Oh, okay. <laughs> so okay. we won't we explore too deep into yeah. their into their That'd stuff. Scary. But I'm just gonna really quick pull out of here. Um, we will just reveal this in the finder. Very and nice. Is, okay. And we'll just drag it in over here. So this is just a PNG that was right. exported. What I sometimes do, because I am, I am, um, I'm very vanilla in my After Effects preferences. Mm -hmm. So there are scripts and plugins and right. stuff. You could have, I mean, going off on a bit of a tangent, but we could even have the window extension Adobe Color Themes open right. in here. We'd right. totally do that. Right. That does take up a bit of resources from right. the Computron. Right. Um, and I would like often the Computron to be focused on on just saving the resources for what I would like. But right. if you have a color palette, you can just load it in here. That's right. It accepts one, two, three, four, five colors, right. the maximum colors That's I would right. suggest you work with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you could work with more. The client might demand you work with more. You should convince them to work with fewer or less. That's right. Fewer. That's right. <laughs> right, fewer. Uh, right. But going back in here, okay. We imagine this is our color palette. So I would like to just really quickly make sure that these are sort of loaded up over here. And what you might even be doing, you might not even have a color palette to work with for your piece. Arranging them in this way will allow you to play with the colors in such a way that you might feel. You know, in yours you might feel, oh, this is too dark, it's too dominant, right? right? Because our, our eyes and our brains interpret colors not the way a computer interprets them. Right. There is something that is dark versus something that is light takes up slightly, feels like it takes up more space. Right. It feels more dominant in the frame. Sure. Those are those like optical illusions, right? right? right. Which line is longer? Well, they're the same size line. Right. Your right. brain is just silly. <laughs> right. right. So if we have these things, we can pull open our we get our swatches going on, mm -hmm. and they are right here. We don't need all of these right. swatches, far too many, but what we can just... You don't need no stinking swatches. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but I we... had to say that, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's why I said swatches before. I was hoping I'd lead you into that, so... <laughs> you bit. You bit it. You, yeah, yeah, you like, took the bite. Yeah. I, I need to have swatches, right. though. But we, we don't need all of them in here. Right. So what we're just going to do... So that, again, really quickly mm -hmm. is... I'm selecting a group of things on the artboard, and then I just hit the new folder button, creating a folder containing right. those things. Right. Um, so now we've got these to call back and reference to if we accidentally delete stuff. Right, you'll take that ping so out of there, it's always there. Exactly, yeah. and you can save this, export it, put it in your libraries, yeah. come back to it later, right. all that good stuff. I've got a question, but how many colors do you often use for one project? Does it vary, or if you're... It depends. It, yeah. So the colors and the colors you choose, and we may come back to this idea of choice a lot. Mm -hmm. As a designer, you might think your job is to draw pictures, right? Or you might think your job is to make things move. Right. Your job is to make choices. Right. <laughs> you are here to make creative right. choices right. that people without your training, without your experience without your eye would not make. Would not be able to. Yeah. yeah. The choices you make will define the project. And the big one of the big choices is color. Right. right? As one of those principles of design, the conscious choice of color is really gonna come in. Sure. I try not to use more than five distinct uh, hues or five distinct like specific colors. Mm -hmm. We might we might use shades of these colors, right? right? I was gonna say, sure. Yeah. So we might go, we might even expand this palette up and down a couple of notches. So if we went window, color, color guide, color guide is very fun, mm -hmm. I recommend it. 
you can see here we could go lighter and darker right. on this. So <laughs> if we were to take this, go like this, go like this. So we could take this and say one step darker. That's right. One step brighter. Not noticeable on the brighter, right. but right. now we're multiplying the palette we That's have to right. work with, That's keeping right. it harmonious. Mm -hmm. Where this starts to get a little bit difficult sometimes is um, in areas like gradients. People right. think, well, can I still do that? Does it get busy? You kind of have to make that judgment call. On the one hand, a lot of color can show variety. Right. So if you've seen uh, today and for the next few days, if you see Shauna X's work, right. great variety of color, right. beautiful pieces, really making uh, rich use of color and contrast to really bring stuff out. Right. Still, you, you notice she works with a disciplined palette. That's right. Discipline right. is is key right. in its sort of colors. We have infinite colors. Mm -hmm. we have infinite colors, we have infinite techniques. That's right. You make the conscious choice That's right. to be few. I sometimes recommend using three and then uh, shades of those mm. so you get into even tighter and still some variety in there so that you could have a frame that's entirely one color, right. one hue, right. but Varieties, varieties within that hue. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's really down to perhaps on Utopia. Perhaps if the brief said red means this, right. green means this, right. blue means this. Right. In some branding, for example, you look at Microsoft's branding of that their Windows mm -hmm. logo, that classic, classic thing. Yep. Those colors have meaning to that right. company. Absolutely, they've chosen them for a reason. What do they mean? How can you use them? Right. Sometimes you are are gifted with brand document that tells you. You may only use green when referring to these things. Right. I'm I'm working uh, with a company that has uh, a very lovely, very succinct brand document, a very new one uh, these days, and they have a lot of prescribed ideas about these colors are only used in a negative connotation. Right. These colors are only sure. used in a positive connotation. <laughs> so when people see if we're making a motion graphics piece and we're describing like a problem scenario, right. for example, if we were at the Utopia company, we'd be saying, is your life on Earth boring? We would be showing that in a certain color mode. That's right. And then come to Utopia, different Where color it's mode. amazing. That's and right. Bright and sunny. Yeah. Right. If you go with like the Pleasantville idea. That's right. Your right. life is black and white. Uh, that's your right. Future is in color. That's right. Um, so yeah, that's hopefully that, another good film reference. <laughs> Pleasantville. A lot of references. So many references. I will catch them all. Later. It's fantastic. We're gonna wait for the Plan Plan Nine from outer space. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> But who, that, that is not a utopia. <laughs> no, it is not. But who in the chat, I am just curious, I'm, I'm thinking maybe Voodoo Val, but who, who in the chat is familiar with Plan 9 from Outer Space? <laughs> just a thumbs up. If you even know, get the Plan 9. If you don't know Plan 9 from Outer Space, I suggest you Google this immediately. <laughs> and then once your streams are done for today, that's right. go check that that's out. That's right, that's right. But A lot of history behind that movie. But <laughs> share that in another stream. But. Yeah. So... We, on this case, we're going to lock it down yeah. to these five. By the way, I really love how you said maybe you also, on some, you know, in some cases, you'll go to three. I, I love this idea, and I love a pro like yourself kind of saying, commit to this, mm -hmm. work within this. I mean, I think especially now, with the millions of colors, millions of choices, millions of everything, yeah, everything yep. we can do anything we want, it's very easy to, to try and throw all of that in, mm -hmm. right? especially as a newer, younger designer and someone in this position. Yeah. And you don't want to do that if you're in this kind of agency environment. You really want to... You need a, a harmony, you need a, um, like a codified thing to work towards. It allows you to be way more productive with right. your time. Right. Like, if we, were, if we were choosing between hard shapes, soft shapes, and color, right, those are just a couple ideas. We're talking about shape, we're talking about color. If you lock one of them, you've cut away all those things, mm -hmm. right? You're, you're locking, removing. And from a decision-making idea, you're making your decisions more binary. Right. The closer you can get to a more a more binary, fewer options. Imagine if you had a if you had a micromanaging kind of client who would come in and they want to weigh in on everything. You present them with seven different things. You present them with all the things. Right. They don't know where to go. Right. They are. Uh, it could be anything. It could be like I do like right. this. I don't like that. Slow it down. Right. Control the pace. Right. So say, do you like this color palette or this color palette? Mm, the 
this one. Good. You've got it. We'll, right, we'll go done. in there. If or if they're like, I don't like either of them. Which do you prefer? What right. elements of that of these five right. colors? Which is the loser? Which right. is not doing it. Which and, is bothering you the most, right? Yeah, yeah. And you can help to narrow down and define. You take ten minutes in that meeting. You save yourself a lot of headache when, if you don't take that time, you come back later. You've created sketches and compositions for them. They look at that and they say, I don't like it. Oh, why don't you like it? Mm, the color. Right, right, <laughs> right. We could have nailed that on yes, day one. Yes. Um, but thankfully, a lot of the times you'll be interacting with companies that have established color right. ideas. Right. Sometimes it's nice to wow them with a curveball. Like, Whoa, I didn't even think about using my sure. colors in those ways. Sure. Or they're coming to you specifically to say, this is our brand. We want something a little off brand. Right. But then you know, you know, not this. Right. right. So you can extrapolate from there. Right. Um, and this is something that obviously I'm, I imagine you learned yourself over time by not... I made a lot of mistakes, you know? <laughs> it's part of the process, right? Yeah. That's part of the process. I've been the guy in the room that uh, had some bad comps. <laughs> that right, right. <laughs> didn't right. go over well. But right. you sort of learn by doing. And yeah. I think one of the benefits of coming into an agency or working in an agency is there is a legacy of information. There's a continuance of experience right. where those who have been there longest, been in the game longest, can teach the younglings how to use their Jedi powers. Right? Right. They, they will hopefully have that experience where an account man's in the room and they're gonna help with some things and you know the, the you know the directors are gonna be there they're gonna do some things so you know, get to leverage that experience now that's also sometimes where conflict comes from because new people have new ideas and if people aren't listening to your fabulous new ideas that's very frustrating because you know your ideas are so good mm -hmm. why won't they listen to my new good right, ideas right. Um, well because someday you'll be the old not listening to the new that's right. ideas. That's right, the, 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 it does change over time, doesn't it? But, yeah. I mean, don't don't repeat the cycle of mind violence. Yeah, no, no. Be no, open to the not. ideas, but. Okay. So we got the colors. Got our colors. So this decision has been made for us, so we will simply move on and start creating what the frame will look like for okay. us. So if we are deciding what kind of grid do we want to work in, like is, do we want to work with the thirds? Do we feel that's good? Do we want to work with eighths? Do we want to work with halves? Do we want to work with even numbers, odd numbers? A lot of that decision can come down to where we want to focus the eye on right. this piece, which is something universal to print. It's you know, universal to any kind of medium right. you're working with. Where does the eye go? Right. I. Uh, the entry. Yeah, so, spoiler alert. <laughs> but the. If you can figure out where the eye should go, you can write the rest of the story to take them there, which is gonna direct us. So let's say, for example, let's say this was gonna go on a phone, and the purpose is to direct the eye towards the place on the phone that is gonna become clickable, right. and that thing you're gonna click on is book my passage today. Yeah, right. We know the eye should go up here. Say, yeah. Or it should go over yeah, here. Right, or, right, right. You know, but upon the generally it right. goes over, That's right. <laughs> over here. Which is again playing on conventions right. and heat maps and all that thing. You could subvert convention. Right. right? Of course. Nice to do that. Oh, unexpected. It's over there. Uh, but um, knowing what works and leveraging that, yeah. there's, there's Hit, power in that, yeah. Hit yeah. your soft targets. That's right. Um, <laughs> right. It'll get harder later. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Don't do too um, much work. Yeah. Right. I can't. Can't stress not doing too much work. So what is good to start with is using the line tool over here, the rectangular grid tool, and then make into grid. And we know the frame size is 1920 mm -hmm. by 10, 1080. Big keyboard buttons. Um, yeah, very clicky too. Click, click, click. And we'll be choosing the number of dividers. How divided is this gonna be? Mm. So if we say five by five. A grid divided. No, that's good too. <laughs> On the nose there, I forgot, sorry. That's right. Um, so yeah. a grid divided itself against uh, itself no, right. is still a it's grid. It's still a grid yeah. after all, that's right. So this is what I did in, in the example. We don't have to follow this, right. but we could. Um, but here we have the basic building blocks where we will be fitting things in. And as you stare at the thing, you think, well, where should they go? You're confronted with a blank page. And I'm sure everyone's had these creative blocks. You're like, uh, what to do? They could do anything. Uh, okay. We don't have to do anything. Right. We've got some guidance. We're making the choices. Right. You, If you choose, let's say you choose, there should be, you know, things should be a uniform thing. We could just do that, you know? We can 
It could be uniform. If in your world it's going to be uniform squares, mm-hmm. let's, let's do it. You know. And some might argue in their vision of a utopian society, that's exactly what it is. That's right. All right. things are the same. Right. Everything is equal. We all wear the same clothes. Mm-hmm. There's no jealousy or envy. Right. Of course, if anyone uh, went to like a, a school that had uniforms, you know that doesn't work. That's too right. good. <laughs> uh, however, you are getting very meta, by the way. Thank I'm, you. I'm yeah. loving it. You, you, <laughs> told, you teed this up early on. So, <laughs> yes. Please, please have him continue. Okay. Yeah. So. Oh look, we've divided it into six equal parts, and now we have a bit of a whoopsie, don't we? Mm. If we want to evenly distribute the colors, we have one, two, three, four, five, and bleh. Um, So, you might decide, well, (laughs) these are going to be the dominant colors, maybe some are going to be highlight colors. Maybe these two are going to be used for strokes and highlights only. Maybe that's a choice you want to make. If in your world that's the case, you know, it can be that way. Mm What I think, though, is I want to try to represent the colors kind of evenly, and so I I don't want six. I want like a multiple of five, so maybe ten spaces. Right. Or you want to arrange them in such a way that by their mass that it, it gets a little bit fairer to each of the colors. Right. So just go back. You could delete all the things and go back. Or something else that's fun, you could just make another artboard right. and keep it going. So... You know, we've, we've got this going on. And you're not necessarily constructing this in a multiple of five either. It's more just about sharing the space. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're just, we're making these choices um, that are hopefully, hopefully going to help us out. Oh, well, I don't want to make an artboard outside the canvas. I want to remove this. And now, <laughs> ah, tool tip. Be gone. Okay, so <laughs> this is the problem when you open up clean installs. Yeah, you right, get a lot yeah. of tool tips. So we've got an artboard. We can make a new one. We can make another new one. We can keep making new artboards. The fun thing about having all these artboards around is that it's going to allow us to iterate, which is great. Um, it's a it's a treat to be able to iterate things and to be able to look at, to compare, contrast, to say better or worse. Do you right. prefer A or B? When you're getting your eyes tested, it's this is one, that's mm-hmm. two. That's right. You want to be able to do that to yourself, you know? This is one, that's two. You have the intonation of that down perfectly, by the way. Thank you. I could have been an optometrist. Having just had my <laughs> eyes checked. One, two. Part of being an optometrist one, is delivering an ASMR experience. Yeah, that's right, yes. <laughs> Definitely a lot. Oh, which I think everyone here can relate to. Oh, many yeah. of many of our f- friends coming from our previous Twitch broadcast as well. I'm very <laughs> familiar with ASMR. Let's both speak. Let's both speak. <laughs> very calm. And make lots of glottal sounds. In the <laughs> you should not say glottal. Glottal, I know. <laughs> <It's> it's, <laughs> that is pretty good. It's up there with moist. So, labeling things is also good. So we've got the grid, and then we've got the place we're going to draw things. Okay. So let's... Let's draw some ideas. Let's just throw things out there, see if we like them, you know, see what we like, see what we don't like, being quick. Quick, non-specific, um, not very uh, good, we'll say, you know. We can, we are refining, we're going quick. This is something that's kind of borrowed from like a software idea, right? Mm-hmm. Get a prototype quick, decide if you like it, decide what needs to change. Right. And so we're, we're sort of doing that idea so that you can look at a thing, you can say if you like it, if you don't like it, and then we can move on to get you the thing that you like. Right. You know, mommy, I don't like. I mean, you have kids, you know what this is like. <laughs> I don't like mac and cheese. But you can't, you can't just tell your client. That's right. That's what we're eating for dinner. And what that's why we developed mac and peas. That's Ooh. the alternative. That's right. <laughs> Is that like the bad alternative? So except the first. Well, one? there's still the cheese in it, but we've just added the peas, and it's a different. You know, okay. it's more fun to say. You know, <laughs> mac and peas. Yeah. So now we've got, now we've got a thing. We can say, do we like it? Do we not like it? Right? Is it too uniform? Is it not uniform enough? Is it is it broken up in a way that we don't mm-hmm. like? Are there elements that displease us about this? Right. And you know, off the jump, I think there are elements that displease us. I don't mm-hmm. like things should perhaps not be so thin. And if they're mm. so thin, they shouldn't be so on the edge, the edge right? right? So, yeah. Question, don't your eyes hurt? You don't wear glasses. What kind of sorcery is this? Oh, my eyes are terrible. They oh. hurt all the time. There you go. There's your honest <laughs> um, answer. <laughs> I mean, 
if this is a thing about ergonomics and, uh -huh, and about yeah. how to deal with your screen, I recommend if you're going to invest in something, the screen is a good investment. Oh, yeah. Make sure that it has those energy ratings and isn't punishing your eyes. Another thing is don't sit close to the screen. Right. Don't be really into it. Right. Sit at a prescribed distance. Have good yes. posture. Yes. You know, this will prolong your life as a designer. As a designer. Um, right. Because like, so my family's mostly some blue collar folks. My grandpa worked the same job of bricklaying, uh, you know, for his entire life. One career, putting bricks on top of other bricks. Right. Uh, Thanksgiving was recently. If you've ever tried to explain your career to someone who doesn't know what that is, like, right. <laughs> are you sure that's a job? That's right. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. You say people pay you to uh, move things around a screen. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Right. But it, like, it does hurt your body to do yeah. this stuff. Sure. And you don't want to destroy your ability to see things. If you're working in music production, don't destroy your ability to yeah, hear right. things. Like, not only it's your eyes and your hands, right? Mm -hmm. So carpal tunnel is very real. Um, so you should exercise, you should take regular breaks. Take regular breaks, you absolutely. Should make Step sure. away. Well, stepping away is great for a few reasons, Step right? Step away from the machine, Dave. <laughs> Imagine. Step away, Dave. These are all, again, very dystopic ideas. I know. See, I'm bringing them in. All right. Stay utopic. Right. Um, so let's, so while I do this, we could, we'll talk a little bit about um, things that could help you yeah. in your in your, in your body pains. Um, stepping away from the machine is also great um, because it gives your brain a chance to kind of reset. You can get into loops, you can get into, uh, you can get into funks, you know, you can get into things that are, you're sort of repeating processes that shouldn't really be repeated, right? right? You, you don't need to be caught in, in these kinds of, um, what we would say, cycles, you know, and if you are caught in a cycle, how do you break yourself out of it? Get away from the computer, do right. something else. The great thing if you work in an agency, if you're in an office where other humans are, they have the same creative issues you have. Right. Absolutely. This is when you get up, you go to the ping pong table, you talk about your problem. Oh man, I just can't get this app to be, you know, to do all the right things. Well, if you tried blah, 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 oh, it's a pretty good idea, I'll go try that. You're from a different, different discipline, so we can right. share that idea. Right, right. So, which is sort of the, you know, that's why we have multiple disciplines here today. We can kind of see everyone's different interpretations and how those feed into each other. Right. So it's, it's leveraging the human mechanisms that you have around you to make that happen. I definitely recommend if you are taking a break, do something active. Don't go play some video games. That's right. not great. right because that's the same thing, just in a probably less postured position than you were in in the first place. You know. Right? Yeah. Well, it's also like it's not resting your eyes. Right. It's not resting your eyes at all. Right. It's it's not really resting your brain per se. No, because you're still inputting visual things. Right. You're still making. There's a different of... type of focus, but a focus nonetheless. That's right. right. If right. anything. Take up meditation. Do that. Yes, I can recommend that <laughs> as a 24-year practicer of TM myself. Ooh, all right. Yes. TM, TM. So, so, TM. <laughs> okay, so. So much going on. Let's look at, let's look at and, yeah. and throw shade on this particular thing, right? Mm -hmm. When we look at it, we think, well, it's certainly got a few more boxes than the other thing. However, it is mixing both uniform things and non-uniform things. Not great, right? And again, it's really dark up here. It's kind of blah over here. The eye is drawn up into this space. Right. So that kind of thing right. can be not great. Right. Something so, very, not very harmonious about that one. Exactly. Yeah. It is both... There's imbalance. And, yeah, it is both too uniform in some areas, right. not uniform enough right. in others. Right. So there are some things you can do to kind of course correct, you can use a little math to help yourself out. Um, in the example that I did, uh, essentially what I did was I started by making something uniform and then busting it up and thinking, what lines am I going to break on this? What mm -hmm. do I, what do I specifically dislike? How do I, how do I break that? Um, and so how we might break it up is, mm. <laughs> Sorry. Mm. Is, uh, is, is we, it hard to do? Is that what you're going to do? No. no, no, no. It's, uh, <laughs> now, we're, now we're doing music lyrics. Yeah. So I'm not that good with it. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Keep those to a minimum. That's right. By the way, it's worth mentioning we're going to have a random, you heard it, random giveaway in 10 minutes. Someone <laughs> could be 
the lucky random recipient. But you got to get active in the chat. You got to let us know you're here <laughs> because we have a system that picks you based on your presence and activity in the chat. So you could be a random recipient of a year of Creative Cloud, I imagine. Is that correct, Chris? Okay, a year of Creative Cloud. Three months of Creative Cloud. Three prints. Three prints. Yeah. It's not that at all. Wow, just uh, <laughs> still be active. <laughs> well, this is live. You can't always get what you want. Yeah, exactly. So, what we've ended up with over here. <laughs> There's a ton of, now, everybody, suddenly everybody's awake. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Three prints. Okay, that's right. Hey, listen, it's still awesome. All right. <laughs> Let us know you're here. Edgar, Jimmy, Mohammed, Catherine, Donnie, mm. Malena. Do you remember the Magic Garden? You remember this show? The Magic Garden. There was a show from years ago. I won't say how long ago, but <laughs> as gray as my hair is, it was long before it was ever gray, called The Magic Garden. And when they'd start every episode, they'd say, and hello to Dana, and hello to oh, Lanier, yes. and hello to Bruno, and hello to Manuel. And it really went on for a very long time. But yep. it was, if your name got called, you're, oh. wa you're watching TV, so it's, just, <laughs> ah, it's me. <laughs> I'm losing it. It was such an amazing thing, and it still, it still matters. So yeah. we always try and uh, greet everyone. Manuel, very nice to see you. They mentioned me specifically. Okay. Thank you. Ah, uh, and Munir, very nice. Good luck to everyone and anyone. So yeah, very nice. Okay, so 10 minutes, we're going to have a nice little giveaway. All right, Beauty. continuing on. Okay, so we're back in the saddle here. So what I'm just doing is a bunch of things so that I can kind of get the idea of, of what is good, what is not good. Then we'll pick one that we like, and then we'll, we'll move on to the next phase as we attempt to balance things. <clears throat> balance in right. quotes, right? Now, let me ask you something. Is the speed with which you're kind of now creating and going, eh, there's something off. Is this pretty indicative of how you typically, I mean, like. This is this is a little bit slower. Okay. This is a lot slower. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right, yeah. Usually I don't even do it here. Usually I'd be doing it with, with these tools. Oh, what yeah. are these strange artifacts you hold in front of us? <laughs> it's called a pa'en, right. and this is paper. Right, now, paper, right. It, no, these are pretty universal, but mm -hmm. you can do this super fast. Like, yeah. <laughs> right. Without color, if you're just thinking of size. I was going to say, is that more about shape and composition? Exactly, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. But you lock that down first. You've got one problem locked down. Right. Move on to the next problem. Okay. So let's go with um, let's go with this more kind of universally blocky looking thing. Okay. Now, now it's it's less it's more it's more uniform. Like one two three one two, and then this one using a similar system as below, but split up right that way. Mm -hmm. So we've got the contrast of a big light thing with a small right. dark thing, right? Mm -hmm. And then here in the middle, these two colors pretty harmonious next to each other. Yes, right? it looks very nice you actually. You could just stare at them <laughs> and enjoy them. You do I, and that's the funny thing actually looking uh, truly, you kind of can get lost in for whatever reason. <laughs> Just two simple rectangles next to each other that are complementary. There's something that works about it. We're gonna head down to the right. MoMA gallery yeah, later right. and yeah. stare right. at that ourselves. That's right. yeah. <laughs> Just think deep thoughts looking at yes. big red on campus. That's or right. Yeah. Whatever that one's called. Right. <laughs> Single rectangle. Right. But I think this is something we can start to work with. I think we can okay. start working with that. Yeah. Um, whatever you've chosen at home. Right. You go ahead with. Go that. ahead with that. Yeah. Because um, when we talk about choices. Each designer is going to make different choices, right. depending on what we got. Okay. So, you might be thinking differently at home, and that's fine mm -hmm. because in your world, that's what it is. You have that's full right. control over this frame. Right. So, what I want to do is is save this and export it as as something that we can now uh, bring into After Effects. Cram into After Effects. Right. Yeah. And so, in order to do that, um, we're, I'm going to do some saving and some importing. Is it time for that giving away part, or we got a couple is, more. is the machine still operating? We got a, we got a couple more minutes. Let's, okay. see, let's go ahead and do the saving important, okay. then we'll do it. We're gonna keep keep them waiting. Good. Florent, very nice of you. He wants to hear the Pirate Teeth song, please. Are you familiar <laughs> with my song Pirate Teeth? I am, yeah. Oh yes. I oh, well, thank you. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I'm a fan. I've I've listened to a lot of your stuff. Oh, yeah. thanks a lot. <laughs> All right, Florent, we'll save it for a little bit later, perhaps. Right, get 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 inspired for that. <laughs> yeah. You have to, you got to work up to it. Got to work up to it, yeah. So, something I would advise people to do, if you know you're going to go from Illustrator into After Effects, there's a beautiful plugin 
we, we can mention third party plugins. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. There's a beautiful plugin called Overlord. Um, and uh, if, I mean, maybe the Cyber Monday sales, sales still going ah, okay. on. Okay, yeah, yeah. Go, go get Overlord. Okay. It leverages some crazy thing where things, uh, if I'm in inside of Illustrator, I can just select stuff, tab, and then it shows up. It just appears. Just appears. Uh, that's I mean, awesome. it's saving me how many clicks here? File, save, saving it somewhere, picking a thing, you know, right? And putting it somewhere that I'll remember, <laughs> which is going to be great. And uh, leaving it untitled so I remember what I called it when exactly. I do so. Right. Yes. So we're saving. Mm -hmm. We're going in, we're opening, we are opening up example of day one, we open it. Now, when you import things by default, here's how they show up. We got .ai. So we could take that, we could drag it onto a new composition. We end up with a, whoop, let's close, let's close the other panels in the group. I know we can just enjoy this. So we've got one layer with this stuff on it. What you might do is use another third-party plugin like Layer Exploder to right. pff, explode it into a bunch of layers. Right. What is most recommended is using good planning, using good good design yep. with this stuff, taking the things inside of Illustrator, and you know we're going to be uh, we're going to be releasing to layers. We are going to be putting those layers separately, giving them all special names. <laughs> Not layers one through seven, well, or, or layer a couple of layer ones in there. I, I know. like yeah. <laughs> what you might want to name. Kathleen, them. you might name them, and this is totally hypothetical. You might name them by the content you intend to put into. Them. Right. No, no, that's cool. No, yeah. that makes sense. Right? Or you might name them like, you know, dark yeah. dark one, and the other one might be, you know, blue one, or something mm -hmm. like that, just so that you are able to find them later without looking at them. Right with reading them, right. so. Makes sense. We, look, I, I harp on people for their bad layer naming when I receive files. Oh yeah. So people give me that business themselves. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, it's totally warranted. <laughs> we, yeah. You only get better if you're. Oh yeah, um, and everyone's done it, everyone's been there. Yeah, you know. but to touch back on the idea of an agency, if you're working in a collaborative environment, Make a file that someone else can open. That's right, and understand. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. put in put in the annotations in your expressions. Put in right. layer names that right. say "edit me," "never edit me." You know, like things that will help. That, or maybe it's just for you, but it's future you. That's you right. You at two years will not remember you know. the layout of you from two. Yeah. That that's actually that's I think that's even a more important point because. <laughs> If for no other reason, even for reference, or oh, I did something for this utopia project, I'd love to pull this in. How will you? F don't spend an hour finding right. it. Right. I know. I remembered it. Layer zero. Let's yeah. just do a quick search on that, and yeah, good luck. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring it in as a composition retaining the layer size, yeah. Whee! which will give us this erroneously named thing. That's right. And by the way, Laura, he did not use a plug in here. He was suggesting that you could use Overlord. It's by, and someone said it's by Battleaxe. That's, That's right. Yeah. yeah, you could use that, but he just showed you how you uh, expand to layers in Illustrator. Exactly. Um, yeah. Which is it's some it's some day one stuff, mm -hmm. but it's important. It's important. Um, it is the stuff that is often skipped. So what we now have is, are a bunch of layers. Thumbs up. We yeah. got them. And they're labeled. And they are labeled. And now I'm going to convert them. I'm going to create shapes right. from the vector layers, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. yeah, not all layers were converted because one of them contained nothing. Right. So whoopsie. If we were using, say, the battle axe thing, we would end up with this. We would just right. be right here. Um, now, the reason that I'm, I'm doing that is because I know in the future, I'm going to want to change the size of these things because of how I animate it. So if we go back to the first example, Everything comes to rest um, in a nice grid, but a lot of these things are like overshooting. They're kind of right. bleh, bumping into frame. Do you have some uh, uh, temporal interpolate, like uh, easing on there too? Mm -hmm. So yeah, okay. So we'll be uh, coming up next is the, is the next phase. Right. But what we need to do is make sure that these things are editable for us to get in there and kind of organically mess with them. Right. Um, we could have. And this is totally valid. If you want to work this way, you can do this. You draw a bunch of rectangles right in here. 
right? right? You could take this thing to say, good, I'm happy with it, now let me recreate that in here. Right. Using the power, using the power of, of uh, just using shape layers. Right, just using shape, yeah, pa shape Parametric layer. shape right. layers, mm -hmm. which are, you just make a rectangle, you give the rectangle a size. Since we're working with math, we can just say, well, this should be divided by six, and then this divided by six, and you know, that's something that is of the size that I want. I prefer to use paths. That's right. I'm trying to save time. Mm -hmm. And I will most likely keyframe the path instead of keyframing the parametric um, right. property. In this case, because the math isn't going to be super important when I'm messing with that. Um, okay, and oh, that's a great point. Like, you kind of have to make that choice of, is the math going to be important? Is it right. going to be valuable for me to adjust this value and have other values? Like, is the value useful to have? Mm -hmm. um, and in some cases, it's not, in which case right. then we end up with this. That's right. By the way, Michael uh, Shez is just pointing out, I don't know if you saw it, but when you made that default rectangle in that default red, do you know about the, oh, yes. the streaming glitchy? Oops. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I was waiting for someone to say it. Our own Michael Shez pointed that out, yes. Stop doing that. <laughs> All right. Someone was asking how you found your style. How did you find your style? You Where was it when you found it? When I found my style, <laughs> it was in the bottom of a trunk. <laughs> I found it when I was on vacation. I get out of the loneliest bar in Brooklyn. <laughs> That's, That's right. right. Yeah. I mean, it was last call. Right. It was just me and my style yeah. there. He gave me a look that said, I'm yours now. That's right. Um, Tragically, that's not usually no, how it goes. Right. <clears throat> I think there is kind of like a big emphasis on finding your style mm -hmm. or finding your voice or right. finding that kind of thing. Um, truly, it might just be because that's kind of where I've fallen down the Plinko board into. Like it's a combination okay. of the types of projects that I've taken on, the sort of challenges that I've solved visually, um, and it's, it's interesting, so a lot of people's... And which ones have resonated the most? Yeah, just, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Sometimes, some people's styles are very in vogue. Mm -hmm. Some people adjust themselves to be right. in line with trends. Right. Um, often, though, ooh, often, I, <laughs> I'm not very precious about how things look. Right. And generally, I, I don't have a, a super unique style. When clients, when I'm working with clients, a lot of the work that often doesn't end up with my name mm -hmm. attached to it, but a lot of that work is is to accomplish a brief and to accomplish something using a style that is that is not my own. The variety of work is done with assets right. I did not draw. Right. I'm working with an illustrator who, they have a beautiful style, right. and it's my job to make it move. Um, I'm not necessarily drawing all the assets all the time. Mm -hmm. So when we are working with other people's stuff, it's helpful if if my design sensibilities and theirs can coalesce, right? right? That's pretty good. But if I'm making the project from whole cloth myself, there certainly is things that I find a little bit right. easier to do. Like I use I, I get into the noodle arms for characters. I, right. get, I get down with that. Mm -hmm. um, in, <laughs> Love in, that by the way. <laughs> this yeah. this yeah. is an yes. arm. Yes. Uh, so when it comes to finding my style, I, I think I, I find it through solving problems, through trying to tell stories, but it's the sort of thing that comes over time. Right. You don't need to go on a vision quest, don't need to go into the idea mines and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're sweating, if you're like, man, I'm sweating, I don't have my own original style, don't sweat it, right? <laughs> right? Like, right. what is more important is to be able to accomplish things right. visually and communicate visually. Right. If at the end of that it turns out, oh man, I got like a thing going on right. here. This is this is a me thing. That's right. Now you've now you've got something yeah. that is repeating often and that resonates. Yes, and it's okay to repeat too. I think that's something oh, people yeah. need to hear too. It's like you know. Yeah, it's like it's too derivative of the last <laughs> thing you you've done that already. <laughs> I think he says that actually. You've the, done the it. Hovering art director, you've done it already. Okay, it is giveaway time. Before we get back into okay. style, so are you uh, firing that off? You firing off the, uh, Gus is firing it off over here? All right, he's talking. All right, talk and chat now. Get busy. Get busy. In other words, let us know that you're here <laughs> because our Gus bot is going to randomly choose you. <laughs> All right, that's <laughs> a hello from Utopia. Very nice. Lucas, Donnie, Ryan, Florent, 
Joseph, Mitch, Deepak, Kathleen. Get the hype going. <laughs> yeah. All right. Wow, they really, it's amazing. Now the hype's going. <laughs> we brought in an, uh, a panel of 20 experts to figure out how do you get people interacting inside of a chat. <laughs> They need a few things. After, thing, thing number one, that's it. high incentive. Right. Number two, they need quick feedback. That's right. Number three, free stuff. <laughs> all right. It's all happening. Hello, Kendra, Muhammad, Rigon, William, Ricky, Balaza, Usama, <laughs> Sergey, Hector, Isoto, Paul Browning. I'm reading these so quickly, my eyes are getting tired right now. Okay. <laughs> Joshua Wheeler, Marty. All right, it's happening. Gus Bot, is it happening? Are we feeling it? Is it coming? All right. Power up the Gus Bot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. All right. <laughs> it's coming in now. I love how. Uh, it's like, I want, I want, I'm dizzy, I want it. <laughs> Your eyes are just scrolling Give it by. to me now. Oh, did you tag? Is it, you got it. Diego. Diego Ibanez or Diego Ibanez. If you are here, Diego, <laughs> shout out. You are, are the winner right now. And also correct our pronunciation. That's right, please. <laughs> However you do that in text form. I, I formerly had an Ibanez guitar, so but it could be yeah. Ibanez, uh, but Diego. Congratulations, Diego. Yeah. Those are beautiful things. Very so nice. They were right. in a tasteful office. All right. Oh, lots of congrats there. This is a wonderfully appreciative, sensitive, artistic audience. I love it. Um, <laughs> which is pretty great. Which yeah. is one of the great things for being a part of the Behance community as well. So whether you're mm. a Creative Cloud member or not, you can still be a part of the Behance community. Log in, and then of course you can comment and uh, take part in what we're doing here on Adobe Live. So really wonderful to have you. Yeah, and, and Behance is a great place to, if you're talking about style, is to oh, look yeah. and see so many so many examples of things people oh, are yeah. doing, and a lot of people kind of show their process a lot totally. of the time on there, and that is a lot of great insight. I would also say it's another place where you tend to see, you see examples of where things are we said before, like derivative. Mm -hmm. But again, it's because it works. Like you'll yeah. look at something and go, ah, that looks like something else I've seen. And then you say, oh, well, this was an ad that he did for, you know, the Whole Foods or some huge campaign. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. It works. It works. Now, what's yeah. also interesting is sometimes clients see something, they say, I want one of those too. Right. I like that. Give right. me that. Oh, would you like something slightly different? Mm -hmm. When I said I want the moon, Don, that's right. I wanted the moon. <laughs> right. um, so. <laughs> Mad Men for yeah, you. That's right. It's very nice. Mm. <laughs> it's not called the wheel. <laughs> it's the carousel. <laughs> All right. There's more, right. more for you right Yes, there. right. Okay. It's not called the wheel. All right. Okay. Carousel. So let's make, this, make some things Madu move, Madu likes right? that one. Madu Shri. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. <laughs> yeah. We should stop telling people where our references are. I know. Come we're, from. We're, Let them that's right. find it. All right. So now we've got the final resting state. Yep. We need to animate things to get there. Um, how are we going to get there? So there's many ways, like we talked about. We could bring them all in from the edges. We could do that. We could have them come in and reorganize, like each one could displace the others. Some could start taking up a lot of space and then end taking up very little space. Like, it could be a journey of things. A lot of the times, the way we end up with these patchworks or quilts um, are, uh, are things um, that uh, these patchworks and quilts, I have to stop reading the prompter. Mm. <laughs> so, yes, I will take care of that. Yeah, the, the patchworks and, and quilts, sometimes they start with a primary image. So maybe in our brief, we're gonna, when we get from one scene to another, or however this fits into the overall project, mm -hmm. it could be that we're gonna start looking at this this upper thing here. We're gonna start looking at that and expand into the rest of the thing. That's one way to get there. Right. We could start with um, with nothing and fill the frame. We could start rather than starting with nothing. We could be starting with something totally unrelated that gets covered up. These are all things that could happen. So we have covering up, 
We have resizing. We have movement. So these are the questions we're going to answer okay. and try to get there in enough steps that we could turn to the director and be like, "Is that, is that it? Right? <laughs> is that one it? You've you know? done it once already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> more energy. That's right. More. <laughs> could there be more energy? So what I would kind of recommend is um, making use of the infinite expandability of digital things and just duplicate that kind of comp. So we're just duplicating. So we got example day one, you know, underscore one. And then you can end up with underscore two and three and four. And right. if you go back and like, well, this is the end state. We've agreed through many committees that this is the end state. Mm -hmm. Let's get there. So. One way, like I said, of getting there is just everything comes in from the sides, blah, which is wonderful if, right. for example, this is going to go over live footage. So if we were doing mm. live streams from Utopia, right. thanks for coming out, now we sign off, <laughs> if everything comes over. Yeah. That's a good way to use That's that. That's a good way to use that. Or if it's like um, during like a like a big presentation, people are like, next slide, please. <laughs> you know, It's a great, great way to mm -hmm. use that getting right. your alpha channels going right having a good time. transitional elements yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so if we were to do it that way we would again working backwards starting from a position that we know will be our end state set a little keyframe down there that's the spot going into the past we know the initial state is away like this it's all the way off off frame you can't see it and what it'll do is it will come into frame Eh, kind of like that. Mm -hmm. Not super exciting. What it lacks is personality. Not a lot of personality there. Um, so what I would actually like it to do is kind of overshoot and then snap right. back to where it should be. How do we add said personality? Exactly. Well, you uh, you go away to camp and then you kind of work, <laughs> work on yourself, think about all the things. Come back with a deeper voice. That's and, right. Uh, so. <laughs> So what, but what I like to do is just copy the last keyframe and stick it in here and then just bump this thing out a little bit. And the exact distances and that kind of thing are going to vary for you. Mm -hmm. um, oops, something else I should do is go into the uh, keyframe interpolation and make sure we have linear uh, spatial interpolation. You can also set in your preferences to make that the default. The default, if right. You yeah. always want to be linear. Mm -hmm. I don't always want to be linear because right. in some cases, if this is was character, if this is character stuff and we're right. moving things, right. it should be more organic. Right, it, it should, should be, be curves. floppy, floopy. Yeah. That's right. right. Living beings don't move in straight lines. Right. Robots move in straight lines. Sometimes they do. <laughs> oh no, it's Jason Bot. That's right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> don't reveal to My, the people. <laughs> they shouldn't know that. Yeah, I've gone too far. So the next thing to do once you've established where in time and what in time. So, yeah, well, that's still not exactly what we're after, right? We need to go into the graph editor, the seldom used graph editor uh, that some folks don't even open. Um, we're going to first ease our keyframes, and this will probably be review for a lot of folks in the chat, but when you observe the graph editor, you can either be observing a value graph showing value of things mm -hmm. over time. In this case, you can see that one of the position uh, vectors, one of the properties remains the same, and the other one goes wee up yep. and down. If we were to look at this on a speed graph, we would see we begin at a speed of nothing, accelerating and then decelerating and then accelerating and decelerating. So what I would like to do is to have this thing uh, come on fairly quickly and then slow, slow down. down. So, boom, boom. so now it's coming on and then sliding back. You could even, if you want this to be even more bouncy, mm -hmm. you could have it go back and then forth and then back and forth. You could give it a couple bounces. If this is in fact a bouncy thing, mm -hmm. you would just set a new keyframe. This is our new end. Right. You know, in this middle state, it's gonna be just a little bit over like that. And you could play it back, boom. And now it's kind of rocking. So that's something you could do. And it really suddenly feels very organic, right? There's Super something different, like, right? It's just so, and it's, it's such simple manipulation. I think it's really worth pointing out too, for those of you, I mean, I know a lot of people still, We I see this all the time on live stream, forget about the graph editor. Yeah. Like this is such an elegant, simple, visual way to get away from the, just the simple keyframing mm -hmm. that we're, you know can be daunting and otherwise kind of painful to yeah. look at. And there's kind of a few reasons why a lot of people don't crack this open. Mm -hmm. I mean, one is 
graphs are confusing and weird. Right. Um, <laughs> the other reason is that if you're coming from, say, a traditional animation background, mm -hmm. you might be used to drawing tweens, right? Your right. way of Absolutely. interacting with speed over time is visual to right. say, okay, the difference between this frame and this frame is this, so I represent that visually right. by drawing it. That's right. Alternatively, um, you might uh, be one of these sort of uh, new people who have come into After Effects and you have <laughs> you have decided that uh, you will you will start filling your garage of tools with new tools. Right. I see that a lot. Right. Um, After Effects is a garage of tools. Right. When you get the creative suite, you're getting access to someone else's garage. And they've right. already filled it with beautiful tools, right? They haven't necessarily put them where you want them. Right. right? You'll have you, to often that, the case. You have right. to do yeah. that yourself. You have to customize your workshop your way. But there's a lot of tools in there. And some people start us off by like, let's get some more things in there. Yeah, let's, right. let's get more tools. And one of the tools that I see people getting into so early is something that negates a need to go into the graph editor. You don't have to go in there because there's a toolbar and you say, well, I want bup, 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 bup. I want these presets. Right. I find that to be very dangerous for people who are learning because they lose the fundamental thing, which is that. What does this mean and why does it mean that? Right. Um, and massaging and poking at this graph editor, I think is important um, and is where what I'm doing happens. Mm -hmm. So. I could look at this and say, I want it to hold there. I want it to kind of float right. and then come back. So if I want to do that float, I could do this. So mm -hmm. now it's, uh, uh, uh. so now it's got right. that pause. You can there. see the float, whereas if you're yeah. just, right, it's, it just makes more sense visually to understand the, mo the motion. Here. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so you end up with a relationship mentally with this line, with this particular uh, feature and it starts to take on meaning for you and I think that's really valuable to be able to look at something to see these little dots out here and mm -hmm. to think I know I can fix that up right. a little bit of this right. um, again like you might be if you're in an agency you might even be jumping in on someone else's machine they don't have all the toolbars right. you've got um, so another thing is that adding more toolbars adds more things the software to do adds more things for your hardware to do. That's right. You're, you're piling, you're filling your garage with things. Right. If you've ever dropped a hammer on your toe, you will never, you will never not put your tools away. That's right. 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 So, it, it's just it sometimes gets to be clutter. Um, now, something else you, you kind of want to do is to is to push these things around to make them a little bit more irregular. So that can be. So what we've done here, if you look at the keyframes, big gap, smaller gap, smallest gap. Right. So the gap is getting smaller. Mm -hmm. You might choose to go the opposite way. You could say, okay, right. big gap, small gap, big gap. You could do that. Again, it's your world, it's your choice. These right. are the choices you're going to make. Right. Um, so if basically you want them all to kind of come in that way, similar speed, you can do that. Mm -hmm. So here with this position, we got a thing here. Because this is larger, it's a larger object, and things have weight in the universe, even flat 2D virtual things right. have weight and mass. How do we know they have weight and mass, right? How do we know that? How do we know that? Well, I've already established it because I've shown you that when right. I move a square at speed, it moves faster and settles back. Right. So, keeping the internal verisimilitude of our piece, verisimilitude, big word for internal consistency, mm -hmm. which is defining another big word by a big word, <laughs> but just the, in, in the story of your piece. Just define it by the definition. I know, sorry. <laughs> okay. That's, you know, it, it's, it's a big piece, so it should operate similarly. So I'm just gonna copy and paste these sort of end times here, yes. and we know that the middle time is going to be over here like this. That could be a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so then we ease the things. This is what an uneased line would look like, right? So then we ease it and it looks like that. Right. We like to have high acceleration at the beginning, which is kind of a trend, but it's helpful. Whoosh. So that's too extreme, right? Whoosh. Right. And then it's doing that jog back. That's right, yeah. Now that jog is happening because we didn't... We didn't uh, go for a keyframe interpolation, right. set it to linear. Mm -hmm. So, 
Now it's coming in like that. And that, because we've got this other thing doing something different, doesn't seem to make as much sense. But what I'd like to do is have these things kind of knock into each other a bit. Ooh, boom. Mm. So I'm coming over here. Now I'm pushing you over there. That's a fun thing to do, right? Maybe in your version, right. you want interaction between the pieces. Right. So this is where we are deciding, do the pieces interact? If they interact, how do they interact? Do they bounce off of each other? Do they cover each other up? Do they um, do they repel each other? Do they do they make a hard bounce when they hit each other? So when we talk about choices, <laughs> that's a big choice. Of which you just gave us many. Many, right. right. Yeah. And it does come back to the design brief. It feels like a visual, it might be a spontaneous thing, it might be you know, mm -hmm. throwing stuff at a wall, see what sticks. But let's go back to the brief. What is Utopia? Utopia is a, a place of joy, of happiness, where the gravity is lighter and the emotional states are lighter, right? right? That's Utopia. Is Utopia about knocking blocks off of each other? Yeah. No, no. It, if it is, it's certainly in a play for a, ha, 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 we're bouncing off each other. <laughs> right? <laughs> how funny. So that could be how right. things go. Mm. So you kind of have to choose... I kind of like things overlapping a little bit, yeah. but if we wanted to do a bounce, maybe it should come in and bounce off the bottom mm -hmm. here. Maybe you could do that. So instead of what we've done, whoop, whoop, remove, just because we are, we've, what, we've got about 40, 40 something minutes left we've on We've got here. approximately 40 minutes. That's okay, right. so we will try to, try to cover more of the movement mm -hmm. techniques here as quickly as possible. Yeah. Um, but, so let's say this one's coming in and then this one's gonna come down. So, we are doing some of this. Mm -hmm. If this thing is heavier, certainly it should be landing with some force. If it's landing with some force, the graph doesn't look like this, because mm -hmm. this is slow to a gradual descent. Right. Instead, it should look like this. We right. should have this hard stop here where, and it should be, Faster, it should be much faster because things fall quickly. Bam! Now it's like a like a door slamming. Bam! Um, so the idea is, after it hits, it's going to go back up, which will be great, and then it'll come back down. So in the middle, it'll be up a bit. And by the way, all the manipulation that you're doing, kind of previewing, manipulating, previewing. This fluidity of playing that back sort of um, pretty much real time, this is also kind of new as After Effects has continued to mm -hmm. update, right? I mean, two, three versions ago, it wasn't quite as real time when no. you were doing all of this. Remember when the bar was either green or not green? Right. Come on. <laughs> right, right, yes. But now, as you can see, That's right. bop, bop. leveraging some global performance cache here, no <laughs> doubt, you know. Uh, it's fun, like, yeah. it's, it's great, because what we could even do. Because you're really doing that, and that's the point, is you're really, you're, you're, you're modifying this as you're seeing it in your head and you're kind of seeing it on screen. The it's dreamer the is both experiencing the reality and making it at the same time. That's right. It's a continuous loop. Um, that's and that's the idea. Yeah. True sensei. It's got great time. That's right. That's right. Another, <laughs> oh, but it's also a hot inception day. Oh, yeah. So if we look at the graph now, what is the graph showing us? It's coming in hot at this point. It fragments so that this point is both here and right. there at the same time. Meaning that its incoming velocity is up here, and if it were to use most of its kinetic energy once it strikes another surface, it is coming back, of course, not as strong as how it came in. Right. Of course. Of course. This is, this is science, folks. So that kind of works out. And then what it's going to do is it's going to go up to this point right. and what can be nice is to have a little bit of a, yeah. a bit of a float in there and so that it lingers a little yeah mm -hmm. as its kinetic energy is dispelled and turns into potential energy right. and then comes back down That's right. all of this fun physics stuff if any of you designers out there <laughs> slept on physics yeah. go back That's get that right. get that physics stuff like it's basic stuff right most people learn it by observing it right you know, you know it's true. You That's know it's right. true by seeing it. That's right. Someone on Twitter actually asked me, I think it was even this morning, they asked me, how do I make animation seem more natural, right? right? And the answer was, well, my answer anyway, was that it, it's the details. It's attention to these details, mm -hmm. not necessarily of our reality, but of the reality we're telling, right? If we live in a world where this 
does that, you know, if this goes back and forth and before it comes to rest, then we must also live in a reality where this bounces, don't right. we? <laughs> so, you know, you got to be consistent. And this, when we're talking about harmony throughout a piece, mm -hmm. we're talking about the colors, we're talking about the shapes, because right. you're a motion designer, we're also talking about That's the motion. Right. Absolutely. So, this choice to make things that bounce is a choice that will stick with the rest of your right. project. Now, this segues really nicely. Uh, it, we, we, it's already been scrolled up, but someone was asking, your thoughts on leveraging expressions, because mm -hmm. again, here we're using simple position keyframes yeah. and the graph editor <laughs> yeah. and some uh, temporal interpolation. There's no expressions being used here whatsoever. There That's are right. bounce expressions oh, and yeah. the, right, the countless ones no. that you could do in the same way and yeah. pick whip it and be done. So here's the thing with the bounce expressions. They're pretty great and they get mm -hmm. you out in a pinch, right? Now the trouble is, you want to try to understand them so that you can <laughs> modify them, right. which is helpful. That's right. Another thing that's interesting is most of them work on the concept of inertia. Right. And this is the idea that in After Effects we can access the positional data, and since we have position over speed, we also have acceleration. Right. So since we have that data, we're then gonna use that data to determine how fast something is going, so it's internal velocity, and then we go this way, and then it's back, 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 back. We're doing that with a decaying sine wave, right? right? Decaying, mm -hmm. decaying sine wave means you'll probably never reach zero well, wait a minute. The thing is staying still, isn't it? Right. No. no. It's moving a fraction of a pixel. Right. So if we back here did that, this would be it would be buzzing. It would right. be imperceptibly buzzing. That's right. But buzzing it would be. Yes. And what that does is the more expressions you start adding, especially ones that are constantly updating, you're ending up with data happening over here. And we were talking about that render thing. Mm-hmm. It's nothing to render this frame. It's right. nothing. Right. If these all had expressions on them, it's not nothing. Right. It's the it's it's something. It's something. Even though you don't see it, right? Yeah. It's it's still happening. And it's having that, to happen. Yeah. And that's where a lot of these projects sometimes get a little and bloated and, yeah. and, and, yeah, and uncomfortable. Yeah. And the other trouble is, what if in the future time, depending on what inertia expression you're using, you're like, right. well, now I gotta move this around. Well, right. it's gonna interpret that movement as well. Right. And so if I'm like, well, now I'm just going to move it out of frame, mm -hmm. well, it's going to bounce when it's out of frame, right? right? Or you'll terminate the layer, right? Right. So it's a choice. It's a choice. Your choice to use expressions, perhaps determined by how comfortable you are with this kind of manual labor, right. is, you know, it's, it's all up to you. But I will say this, for me visually, I think, eh, this is not floating for long enough. Boop, ba doop, boo, I do this. Right. Now it is, and right, right. in an expression, I would go in. That's right, readjust the value, yeah. right. So this is something that I, I say a lot, either on the YouTube channel or on mm -hmm. Twitter. We are simplifying, we are not simulating. Right. If you want to simulate the physics of these things, we got Cinema 4D, let's get simulating, right? right. Let's download Newton, let's simulate it, you know? Let's do it. Let's get simulating. But. <laughs> Get it simulating mm -hmm. mm -hmm. while you're waiting. Um, but we're simplifying. So we're not making, when we animate a person, we're not connecting tissue to bone. We're not, we could be IK right. rigging them. Right. And in that case, you are kind of simulating, right? That as mm -hmm. this changes, this is moving and right. blah, blah, blah. That's a simulation, right? For us, we don't really have to simulate those things. We are creating the illusion of it. Right. We are simplifying that to I take like that. it into its most fundamental. I love that. Yeah, simplify. Simplify. Don't simulate. Don't simulate. And I think that's where a lot of people get hung up because they get they get uh, they get a little bit um, hung up sometimes on the idea that things have to be what they look like. Mm -hmm. I guess so. Let's see, let's go to, just real quick to kind of illustrate that idea. Yeah. That things don't have to be what they look like, so. By the way, want to once again emphasize that there is a contest going on right now. So if you're watching via Behance, click on the contest tab and uh, submit your animation to us. We're gonna show it here momentarily. Yeah, so we- uh... Millions of submissions right now. <laughs> We'll have to comb through them all individually coming up. So it's, uh, so yeah, and this idea of simulating something, not actually doing the thing. 
Let's look at, at, at this scene here, okay. in which you know we are we are at you know jungle world, mm -hmm. um, just like we heard about in the last presentation. The idea of teleporting is very utopic. Um, right. For anyone who lives in a city where you have to drive, you know the least utopic thing is going places. Right. Um, but in this thing. We are not simulating a change of scenery from one spot to another. We are simplifying the change, which in this case is basically a hidden match cut. It is a hidden match cut between two shots that have identical speeds. Mm -hmm. So, hmm, pretty seamless, right? <laughs> but since you can see the timeline, there's the seam, right? It's right down here. What we could do is a lot of stuff. We could render this in 3D. We could be moving a camera. We could be doing all this right. stuff. We are not doing those things. Instead, we are choosing to move from one scene to the other and then back again simply. We are simply doing it. Right. And rather than simulating that idea. Now, we could do all this in 3D and still use some of the same principles sure. that, that, that make this possible. The idea of seeing a scene inside another nesting stuff. But it gets, it turns into a lot of work. So yeah, it turns into more work, and also, to the earlier point, you're not able to, to create and preview as quickly mm -hmm. just by nature. Right? That's right. It's, it's a little bit. It's a little bit different. Yeah, you commit hard into one channel. Mm -hmm. It's not super good. Like, I mean, that being said, I recently got married. Commitment is awesome. <laughs> but. Like, hard commitment from a design perspective, you would need full sign-off to know you're going in the right direction. Right. Um, you know, you could be committing too early, right? right. And uh, it, it, can be, uh, it can be trouble. So it, you want to make sure people are on board, then full commit. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to you know, get all your ducks in a row, then cross the road. Then cross the road. Yeah. Uh, Regan, we've got about uh, 23, 20, 20 minutes approximately, 17 minutes to submit your artworks. <laughs> Remember, of course, we'll be back tomorrow and Thursday again with Evan, 1 p.m. Pacific time right here on Behance. Uh, so you've got you've got more time. You don't have to get them in today. We realize, of course, you're building these animations. These these could yeah. take some time and thought. They, and, they can uh, take a lot. Of you've time. had a little more time to think about it than they have. So that's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, so. we got this brief previously, that's not right. this morning. So, but we're go we're going to expect a lot from you tomorrow. That's what that means. So, <laughs> are we are we reviewing the submissions at the end of today's session? Uh yes. Okay. Which is, uh, as I said, millions. Beauty, beauty. Yeah, so <laughs> we have. Good. Okay. So. What we'll do now, uh, I think, is uh, let's get some of these other things coming on and interacting yeah. in an interesting way. Yeah. Um, because there are many other ways, like we said, many other decisions that we might use to pull these things out. Um, so let's say, for example, we were going to have this green one come out. Let's have it show up. That It's going to come out and then... Um, like a rubber band. We're gonna have right. the back of it be very long mm -hmm. and then snap. So bleep, boom, let's do that. I'm sensing graph editor magic. In, yeah, in we're, this. yeah, we're gonna crack open that graph editor. We're That's gonna right. get in there. Um, so this is the final resting state of its position. The initial state of its position is way over here. Mm -hmm. Let's solo it so we don't have to be confronted with all these other ideas. Right. Um, but we won't have this one bounce. Let's right. not have it bounce. Right. It's gonna have enough going on. You're gonna have it snap. Yeah. Snap in. <laughs> Boom. Ignacio, yes, these uh, video sessions will be archived today on uh, the Creative Cloud YouTube channel. So you'll be able to watch them immediately after we stop. So uh, within about uh, 32 minutes, you'll be able to watch this from the beginning on the Creative Cloud YouTube channel. Mm. Which is great. So it'll be archived for posterity. Archived for posterity. All of our whoopsies will be on That's the right. internet forever. That's right. All of our embarrassing moments. Okay, so if we look at the graph editor, here's what's going on. This thing's coming in pretty fast. And we are now going to edit the other part of the <coughs> equation, the reason why I left them as paths. Uh, right. This path. Boop. So we'll just put a little, put a little keyframe there. When you animate the path, there's not a huge amount of stuff to work with. Paths don't have inertia, for example. Right. However, recently we, we got a lot of interesting data that we can now access in the 2018 release, mm. and we're going to we're gonna get into that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We're going to do more of that when we're doing way more specific and very tiny little things, okay. which yeah. is great, because it really helps with the detail work. 
But in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to... I think Florence already interrupted. He's saying, is he the only one to mimic the sounds of objects when he explains the animation to colleagues or clients? <laughs> I do that all the yeah, time. Yeah, I'm going to say, you are, you are chock full of them. <laughs> it is... Uh, I am guilty with all... With all <laughs> any computer-based anything, there's always some kind of... <laughs> 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 it's yeah. It's always it, some kind of sound effect happening. It's wonderful. Floral. Very it, nice. It helps people to really uh, feel they it. They feel it. Yeah. yeah. Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. <laughs> feel it. Um, Can you feel it? <laughs> well, I think what's also kind of important is that in the end, most of the time you put sound design on this stuff, right? That's right. Of course. And the audio makes your experience of visual things very different. Right. So when you have a weep sound, right. boop, you know, that sound that that hard hit right. and then a fading away right that makes you feel something right you could just be looking at a static image of a dot in the middle of the screen right you hear boop right <laughs> that means something it means something Your right you, you, you connect to it in a different way absolutely yeah so what we're gonna do <laughs> the nike swoosh exactly so with this it's very simple right we're just starting with the tail being longer and again, we're talking about the verisimilitude of this rectangle. Mm -hmm. If you if you're doing animation in college, you've probably had to do this with rectangles with circles. Right. This is the uh, squash kind of thing, where we know that these two things. If we look at the two graphs. Well, they're hard to look at next to each other because they don't have a good reference between right. each yeah. other. But what this one is doing is just decelerating a little bit, like this. But it's just it's it's action starts just before just before it hits the wall so it hasn't hit the wall yet but we know it's it's decelerating if this was like a bunch of jello or something right you would you'd be able to see that um, some non-newtonian fluid right. <laughs> right. You would see the wave crashing through it as the inertia of its movement is coming in and then it's coming to rest like that if we want to get even more advanced, you would probably have this thing here, like flub. It, it would do the flubbing a little bit. It would, you know, go in too far and then out too far, so it might do that. So we would grab these points at this juncture, and so it would come in too far and then expand back out, and then that's where it would live. You know, we could definitely do that um, because we've determined that's how things work in our world. And if in your world they don't work that way, that's totally fine. Oh, that's, that's right. That's your choice. It could be that way. It could not be that way. I think it's also worth pointing out, just from a even though again not trying to achieve a particular look or style of the day, but kind of what you're showing here, you really are seeing a lot of this. Yeah. Dare I say, styled animation. Yeah, I think people are are getting a lot more. You're getting a lot more animation in your motion graphics. Uh, period. Whoa, right, you got right. chocolate in my peanut butter. That's you right. got peanut butter in my chocolate. <laughs> but having a lot more, a lot more character to everything seems to be the way to go. More right. playful, right. Uh, more jubilant, more joyful. Right. Things are right. things are poppier. There's a lot more of that. Um, and it might even just be because a lot more animators are making the transition into a motion graphics environment. Right. Or they are. We're seeing a lot more people with the traditional animation background. Mm -hmm in this field. Right. So that means you're seeing a lot of titles that are, that was, are a lot more playful. I was playful, gonna say, right? titling, lower thirds, all of these kinds of things, you're really seeing a mm -hmm. lot of that in commercials in particular. Yeah, right? you're getting that, that it used, I think the, the curve used to be like slow, fast, slow, right. and now it's fast right. bounce. That's right, so, right. And there was a period where things were too bouncy. We're getting to a medium bounciness right. these days. Right. Materials are getting a lot less rubber. Yes, yes, um, that's right. Here we've got a nice little mountain uh, that, mm. that it's uh, got things going on. So we're, you can see the ex the speed. You can see the units per second that is happening on the graph. Mm -hmm. And this is sort of something if you're just getting into the graph editor to pay attention to that. This is probably too fast. Why would the inertia, why would the speed be as fast as it was in the beginning? Right. Why would it be so fast? Too fast, says I. Um, so we will probably, you know, stretch that out a little bit to even if not, if we, if we're not uh, messing with the speed too much. And to be honest, this is perhaps not the true representation. Uh, nope, it's right there. Yep. If you hover over any part of the graph, you'll get the units. Right. Which is sometimes very helpful. More helpful, I find, on the value graph when mm, you're, okay. you, you might be needing that data for something. 
but then we end up with this. So hopefully on everyone's stuff, we get to see some more of that. Maybe we'll see more of it tomorrow. Yes, and we've we only got to review things. Nasser, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name incorrectly, but we're going to be showing yours momentarily. It's pretty awesome too, by the way. Yeah, get your get Still your entries time. in. That's uh, right. It you. is. It's a big ask to have you animate it is. something it while is. you're also listening. Also to Also listening watching. to you and going, I want to do that in what I'm doing yeah. too. Oh, I so changed my mind. I at changed the end. my mind. <laughs> Scrap it all. Well, I'll say this. You should just uh, do a little pre-stuff tonight. That's right. That's Come right. Come back tomorrow, right? If this inspires you, you know, when when the stream is, streams are over today, right. then take what you've absorbed today, bring your best stuff tomorrow. That's right. Right. Like this. You know, there's a lot of good stuff on TV. I'm not gonna lie, but this is also good. Right. <laughs> and that's so. I had uh, I had a, a professor in college used to say, "You got to pre-produce to reproduce." <laughs> All kinds of hidden messages in there, but yeah, I think you get the the idea. Your professor's right. a creep. He was a creep. <laughs> <laughs> he was terminated six months later. Yes. <laughs> no shade on that no professor. Shade on that. <laughs> He's a very nice man. So we've got we've got sort of these three that are kind of done. If you are, let's say, pressed for time on a project mm -hmm. and you want to do something clever, well, we've got a reveal for this one. It's right here, right? It's when it's covered and then revealed. Whee! Right. The only thing you would have to edit about it is that it takes needs to take up more space so that the patchwork is not revealed. Now, going on with this kind of stuff, you really want to make sure that when things are covered, they are covered. This gap is important because it's revealing bounciness, right? right? But this gap is erroneous because it, it doesn't look great. It's a little wedge poking in at the side of our vision, agitating us. So. When we're filling up our, our mosaic, when we're filling it up with stuff, we just want to be kind of cognizant of these little gaps. Mm -hmm. That's okay. the sort of thing that I would come back on the second iteration and say, not feeling it. Right. That's not the move. I, I'm losing it with the gaps. Exactly. Yeah, right, right. Unless the gaps are revealing something interesting behind them that right. we want to get into. Okay. Yeah. In which case, Keep the gaps. Keep the gap. um, mind, mind the gap. Mind the gap. Mind the gap. So to go back and just uh, have a peruse of the example here to point out some other things that are going to be important, especially for tomorrow's stuff. Um, each of these compositions needs to take up as much space as is going to be maximum, maximally observed of them. So, for example, our utopia uh, text down here at the bottom. The final size is this. Right? The final size is taking up you know, three boxes by right. two boxes, right. which is great, but the size that the, uh, the Utopia logo is, that it needs to be, is actually the largest size. It needs to fill up all of the mm. space. So when tomorrow we're making these fun compositions, they have to be at least that large, which oh, is why okay. in here you see I've created this shape layer that is so, so big. Right. I can't even <laughs> see why, why, Evan, is it so big? That's right. Well, it's got to be so big because here in the mosaic, if we didn't have it, we would have the gaps and then I right. would lose my mind. Um, okay. Yeah. Things are not... Trying to see, I, I, it took me a second to see what you're getting at there. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Makes sense. So okay. this little gap is alleviated when right. we click this little tag here, this collapse transformations, continuous mm -hmm. rasterizations, when all of the goodness that is inside this scene is now housed over here. Mm -hmm. Now we're also using uh, track mats and stuff to contain things, so that is where we uh, we are getting it done. So it's it's expanding and containing. It's a lot more stuff. So in our in our example today, the next phase after you've got the stuff and the stuff is moving. Each of these boxes will have its own kind of composition to it, and each of that will have to have even more advanced ideas about shape and, and color and contrast, you know, and should this layer be dark on the bottom, light on the top, because it's going to abut something that is light on the bottom, dark on the top. Whoa, mm -hmm. that would be kind of weird. That would blend in the middle. Right. Or, you know, we have these kind of considerations like the water line is around the uh, the, the line here. How clever is that, right? right? Because each of these individual elements is still on a grid, and that right. grid should be respected. So the line that the tent is on is on the line of the grid, and this line is 
on the line of the grid. So do you do you use grids for everything? Like our grids? I know I, I know we've had a lot of designers here who are they swear by it. Yeah. I've I've seen in motion graphics. I've actually I've seen it kind of go both ways. I've seen a lot of guys, people who just love grids. They use them all the time in summits. Uh, I just check it for reference. Yeah. Kind of. So I think it really depends. Like. Mm. Math can sometimes be beautiful. Sometimes math is not applicable to the project. Right. Okay. Um, like, let's say your client was like, "Could you make it like Wes Andersonly?" Then the idea is, well, everything's going to be center frame, That's right, and right. your symmetry is very important. That's right. Absolutely. If that stuff is not important to the project, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. I will say that if you're uncomfortable about balance and you're uncomfortable about composition, if you feel eh, it doesn't look quite right, the grid can help you out. Right. A grid is precision. So mm -hmm. that uh, hopefully can help you out. I personally am toggling it on and off all the time. The, one of the reasons I don't like to work with it on is you're introducing color over everything, this green grid over top of everything. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, if we go into our final preferences, <laughs> or we go into our grids and guides, you could select a color that is more appropriate to what you right. want to be working with. And you could use dashed lines, you could use dots. So if you find the grid super useful but intrusive, play around in here and find something that's less intrusive. Okay. Like we could set it to dots, you know, maybe the grid will be, well, this is a proportional grid, it's a different thing. But right. if you have the other grid on and you're snapping to the grid, then you probably want to oh. mess around with okay. that. Okay, yeah. Um, so, I just, I really, I love the way you're doing it because actually I think not only in, in explaining, but it really does. It sort of illustrates how, even if you're, I mean, I'm not a designer, so I, I always, in fact, I talk about this very openly, <laughs> my design anxiety. <laughs> and uh, I've tried to use grids and somehow even setting up, a, like, setting up the custom grid in the way you described it before, that gives me anxiety. <laughs> what if I change the number and the number's wrong? <sighs> the whole project's wrong. Now I don't know what I want anymore. <laughs> um, but this really, it really does. It really, it, 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 it makes so much more sense. And it, and I like the math behind it. That's mm -hmm. the thing. I, I love the math. I just often struggle with, how do I break it down? Mm, yeah, and so <laughs> some people. <laughs> <laughs> Over to you, Evan A. Thanks. That's fly. That's like from break into <laughs> electric boogaloo. That was and then, possibly my worst ever. And then we won the dance yeah, contest. That's and right. We saved the youth center. <laughs> saved the youth center. <laughs> oh. What teens are saving the oh, youth? Oh gosh. Anyway. So <laughs> good, dude. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get into a lot of this more specific stuff. So today, what I think people should concentrate on. Coming up with some cool stuff for tomorrow. Thinking about which of these things they want to get into more, uh, which would which would be nice. So if you want to just yep. think about, well, tell me about the gateway thing. We might take an impromptu mm -hmm. poll tomorrow and okay. see yep. what people are into. Because certainly we won't have enough time to really dissect all of them. Right, sure. Um, dissect and make them is the challenge. Right? Yes. And make while talking, also challenging. Also challenging, um, yes. But I will say for today, the, the other thing that's kind of important is you could be sort of throwing sort of anything, little placeholders into your patchwork to just give the idea of what the scene is. Okay. So if, for example, uh, we have, uh, like, um, let's say we were looking at, like, well, the producers have decided that this here is about cats. You know, this should be about cats. Well, we can go window, uh, da, 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 where's our libraries? Come to our libraries. <laughs> Yes, and by the way, I'm pulling up, we've just received a whole bunch of new submissions, so I'm pulling these up as we speak. Beauty. Be able to watch these momentarily. <laughs> so we, we crack open our libraries, and what we want to do, search Adobe Stock for, like, cat face. So if we search Adobe Stock, we come up with some cat faces, um, and... Or maybe it's it's more expressive than that. If it's in in keeping with the utopia theme, it could be a uh, rocket ship. Okay, yeah. So you can search for these things and assets that are similar to what you want based on keywords will render up here in this wonderful window. So let's go with a photo. Just okay, yeah. Maybe you've created a wonderful patchwork, but you don't have anything to go into it. Right. You know, we can just drag out of the library and drop it in here. Boom. No easier than that. <laughs> By the way, so now let me ask you, um, how often do you do you actually go into Adobe Stock? Do I prototype like this? Yeah. Um, not as often as I should. Okay. Because yeah. fair, fair usually answer. the thing I'm presenting to the client is like my own kind of sketches. Sure, right. Um, okay, yeah, that makes but sense. But I'll say this. 
If you're not confident in your drawing ability, you send someone a mood board with with a rocket ship in it. Right. They know what's up. They know what's up. <laughs> like, and they know you know what's up. That's right. That's right. Yeah, so right. what we want to do is we want to use these things to kind of define the space that we need. So what I would do is do it like it was real. I would say, well, this layer, which I'm going to replace later, it will be replaced, is going to use a track mat of the thing above it. Wonderful. Okay, so if that's kind of the rough composition, it's got to go in kind of like this. That's pretty cool. It's going to sit in there. All right, so I've got a rough composition of what we're going to do. So when we play that back, it needs to be parented. That's the thing also to do. Parent the thing to the other thing so that it moves with it. And there you go. So that's how it'll come in. You might decide, once you've observed this, you okay. might say, well, I don't think it should totally do that. I think it should it should move in at the same time, but maybe not bounce. Maybe it shouldn't bounce. Just the window that reveals it should bounce. Right. Well, you could do that as well. You know, you can do that uh, quite simply by not parenting it and just having it position change as well. Mm -hmm. So these are, again, you're making quick choices, quick iterations, quick changes, that are going to help you out. So it's going to go here, and then we're going to ease that, make its graph similar to the other graph, so that its position, we are observing too many positions. There it is. There we go. So it's coming in, and the other thing is bouncing. So as you can see, its bounce reveals that little sliver that, oh, that yes. happens. So you probably do want to have them parented. But now we've answered that question very quickly, and we don't have to think anymore about it. So, you know, and it's just like that. We don't have to animate the whole scene. We just put a picture of a rocket ship in, and now we know. Right. Um, something else that it can tell us is that, you know, this framing of the rocket ship, it needs to be bigger. It needs to be bigger. Bigger like this. Mm -hmm. And we might even know now, well, the rocket I want is to be kind of over here or down here. Right, or... So you'll resize accordingly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and or reframe accordingly. Yeah, yeah, and accessing the Adobe stock is also pretty helpful because maybe you're not doing this for a purely motion graphic piece. We did in this case. It's a mosaic right. full of this. It right. could be a mosaic full of... Uh, photos. It could be a mosaic full of video. Right. It could be any of those things. Right. Those are all awesome things you could do with this initial setup that we've done. And it's just as easy as going in, selecting the footage, and replacing it. Mm -hmm. Just like, well, no, this one's a rocket ship now. I changed my mind. So now it's a rocket ship. You know, you can just you select a layer, you hold Alt, and you drag it in, and then it's changed. Nice. So, you know, and if later so the producer comes in and like. You know that portal scene? It's not working for me. We need circle portals. We need blah, blah, blah. You just right. make something else, you swap it out, and you can swap it back later because After Effects is non-destructive. That's right. Way. And you can end up with many iterations and many things, and it's perfectly right. wonderful. Um, and just as you have your day one, day day one underscore two comps, I mean, mm -hmm. you, can, you can keep. Yeah, so like yeah. we've made specific choices about what should be arranged where and how, but you know, maybe on day two, or on on example two here, you might say, well, I don't know, I don't think dark in the corners is the way to go. I think really, I don't want to use any dark backgrounds at all, so this is the situation that I'm going to go with. And in fact, I want to specifically mandate to myself, I want these all to have kind of a gradient to them. So right. the dominant okay. feature of this will be this color, however, the thing that, that I want about it is that it's going to be a gradient, and that gradient is going to be uh, going from one of our lovely colors to another, another of our lovely colors like this. So, oh, so now we can say this, and we can be like, even though these are two similar colors and they're close together, I put that gradient in there. You got the, you got the boundary mm -hmm. definition, right? Gradient on gradient action. That, so that is the hot... That's kind of Can a we style. say that? I don't know. <laughs> Shut down. <laughs> Your stream is over. And suddenly the camera went off. <laughs> yeah. So we could do uh, we could do just like this. So now we're we're working with gradient backgrounds. I love that. In a fun way, and kind of like a subway tile look to it. I am redoing my kitchen. Okay. So this by the way, is I'm very cathartic. I'm taking down all the names here so I can just play these back and okay. not have to switch. So oh, you're using the paper. I'm using the paper and the what was this one? The pen. A pen. The pen. Yeah, that's right, correct. Right, right, okay, right. I like it. So yeah, this is a great way for you to play around and get your motion, 
get your get your gradients, get all the things stylistically, one little step at a time as you approach the perfect thing. Very nice. What's also nice is if you're working on kind of a tight deadline, a lot of people when deadlines are tight, and this is gonna circle back to this right. meta conversation yeah, yeah, yeah. about agencies. When times are tight, people skip steps. When times right. are tight, you start skipping steps. The steps you start skipping are your pre-production, or things like this, you're skipping mm. those. One hour of a couple iterations to get a positive choice can save you right. when, you know, well now we've got five hours to deliver and we have to make a big change. Right. Well, no, no, you, you could be getting people involved in the process a lot earlier, right. checking, checking, checking. If someone is putting you on a, on a hard deadline, um, then you want to make sure that since they're engaged with that hard deadline, that fast turnaround, put the engagement back on them as well and say, I'm working hard to make this happen. I need you to work hard and engage with me in the process to right. be available to make these quick turnarounds. Right. It might not always be possible. It might be, well, I'll be back in the office in a week. I want to see a done product when I get back. I'm like, oh boy, well, I need to fill out a resume and uh, start shopping around. <laughs> right. so, but those are just... Extreme. Yeah. You need to dialogue and communicate and say what is reasonable to achieve in this time. And a lot of the times it's well, we're gonna we're gonna see uh, you'll see iteration and you'll see what's going on. Yeah. So Okay. So let's see. Is it time you think it's time for us to oh hey, Christine Heron is in the house. How are <laughs> you? The creator of my logo t shirt for another <laughs> one of my children's songs, <laughs> put your pants on. <laughs> If you haven't heard, put your pants on. And this is, we talked about this before. I'm gonna make up a story right now. We talked about this before about often working like this, being too close to the screen, not getting out, not wearing any pants. Yeah, well, I'm a, I'm an iron shirts at the home office kind of guy. Mm, yeah. When I show up, I'm wearing my game shirt. That's Because right. it's game time. It's game time. <laughs> also, I get a lot of packages to that. Yeah, I so. totally understand that <laughs> completely. Okay, so I think it's, uh, let's do, uh, yeah, let's go through the submissions right now. So we can go ahead and switch over to a minor. We're already there. Yeah. All right, so the first one here, again, apologies for the pronunciations. Um, so this is uh, Nasser Adin, first one submitted. Hi from Utopia. You're saying it right there. Oh, yeah. Hi. Waving back to him. Very nice. I'm digging, Very, digging the hat. Digging the hat I a like lot. the leaves. Like, yeah. good flex on those leaves. Um, yeah, the hat appears to be perhaps psychokinetically, or no. Mm. Maybe that's not a hat. Because <laughs> you'll notice it moves. A beacon? What is it Well, exactly? I'm saying like, right, it yeah. might be part of his body. Oh, it could be part of the body, yeah. yes. But uh, it is because that point is moving. We I'm know... trying to get all meta. You're actually talking about the construction of the yeah. character, I see. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So like, it's nice that like the point of the hat is kind of showing us the face direction. Right. right? So that's that's good. Very nice. Yeah. All right. Next, we've got Mariam Klanjam. <clears throat> Let's take a look at this one here. Ooh. Ooh. A lot of things getting drawn. We got a Sputnik going on. We got uh, we got a revolving planet. We got those. Uh, we're talking about things that are on trend. We got those very on trend clouds. Mm -hmm. that people are into. Yes. Yeah. And it's you know it's got a pretty good uh, kind of composition around it. Um, but yeah, it's good. Nice. Okay. Showing some depth in there. Next here. Okay. So this one is from Anandu BS. Hi there. You can call me Doris. Okay. okay. Let's see what this is. Weep. Utopia. Ooh. It's like an artificial intelligence. Yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's got those fun waves. And I am your assistant. utopian assistant. <laughs> I, I can hope you be the perfect utopian. <laughs> There's something a little dystopic about that, isn't it? You have I broken really, protocols. I can very easily turn into a bot at any point. <laughs> this is very cool. All right, next we've got uh, Juan Camila Ramirez. Take a look at this. <laughs> Yeah, three, 360 selfies from Utopia. That's pretty fun. Yeah. I like the idea, like it plays on a thing people actually do. Right. In a graphical context. I see you real close in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, you could have done a reverse of the scene on the glasses. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Filled with Beatles and Make It Show in my uh, <laughs> timeline here. Okay, so this is uh, uh, Giovanna Tosello. Oh, I love it. That's, that's a nice hand-drawn thing we got going on. Yeah, quite and beautiful. in the eye, it looks kind of like a planet. That, that might be 
just the eye, but right. Yeah, I, lo I love that kind of hand-drawn style. That's something that's fairly popular right now. Very nice. Get people doing legit drawing. All right, Paul von Summeren. Retracting the plank. Elevator's going down. The rocket takes off. All right, and we cut, and we have a second distinctive scene. Oh. So oh, nice. Some nice halls. camera movement there, yeah. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And some utopia comes. Oh. All right. Digging that dome. Need to pick winner. Okay. Gonna have to skip through the last three here, three okay. here very quickly, and we'll review these again tomorrow. We'll go super quick. All right, super fast. Okay, this is uh, Heidi Morrow. Yeah, some so stuff flying by. All right. And then we've got coming up next. Okay, we've oh this is Heidi Morrow. Sorry, that was uh, Truffle. Social media and utopia. Yeah, we got some stuff cruising around. Very nice. All the emoji you could possibly virtually observe. That's right. And last but not least, Dana Pride. Very nice. Cool. All right. And we've got our magical sound design happening. <laughs> and our quick winner. Oh, it cut us off. We're cut off. Oh, it was a hard Oh, that's of course oh. because the stream stops. Yes. All right. Yeah, no, I realized that. So, 